Hello everybody, I'm Alex Antuna. I would like to go over uh, macro script on this. I learned the other day that um, I was doing a lot of clicks for creating these straps on my character for Edward Scissorhands. And I was thinking like, why am I doing so much work for, for this and how much I could have optimized this. And in the end I found a technique that worked. A lot of times we don't use the macro because it, it can kind of be a little confusing or intimidating if you're new to this. If you use Photoshop, you probably use macro script to create an action and go from there. But for this character, I used an extract for these these um, leather straps on the model. And what I found out, I was using a lot of the extract and the zebra measure. And what I would do is mask out the model and press the extract and go from there. Now what I like to do is create a macro and if I were to break it down I just want to kinda have this visual for us to see. So the macro and this will be the chain of what we're gonna do. The first part is selecting and that is with the mask we're not going to use this part of the macro because it could be anywhere on a model and the, it could confuse the macro. So after we select the model or the mask, then we want to go to the next part, the extract. So this is where we'll start the macro. And I just want to break it down so you can see visually and then I'll do it. First we select it and then we're going to go to the extract. When we press extract, the default is usually point zero something but we want to change this thickness to zero that's already one click the next button that I usually have to click is the extract already two clicks we would have saved that much more time the next one is accept because if you don't push accept it won't extract the model it usually lets you preview After I get all this, and this is all one from this, the extract area. So that's already three clicks that I could have saved. The next part is the Z remesher. When we go down to the Z remesh, usually legacy is not checked, and I need that checked for this option because it really seemed to work for this. And so we'll go ahead and add legacy. and that's one check. The other thing I usually check is turn off adaptive. So by default adaptive would be turned on. And then the other thing I check is half. So if you already look here we got one, two, three, four, five, six buttons that we've already pressed to get one strap and that's Quite a few strap, quite a few buttons to press. The last one I'm going to press is Z remesh. And I'm going to click this at least probably two times. After that, we'll get a model. It might seem a little overwhelming sometimes when you're trying to break down functions that you're doing, but this seems to help in speed and flow and getting something going a little bit quicker. So if we go into a new model and we'll start with that, we'll we'll start with the basic sphere so it's not so complicated on what we're trying to do. We're going to make this into a poly mesh 3D because it doesn't extract basic poly models. What we're going to do here is go up to macro, and this is where ZBrush has macros for you. If you don't click this, this won't show all the other ones, and there's a lot of other functions that are already in there by default. 
uh, in the new version. I'm not sure what's changed or if it's still the same. It could change over the next version. Uh, if not, then it probably, hopefully it all stays the same. You can see down here I added a quick tools and this is one of the tests that I did to extract. So to create our own, what I did was select this, like I said, and then we're going to go ahead and go through the process of what I just did or wrote out. The first thing you want to do is click new macro. It's going to ask you if you want to initialize. You can push yes, but it will reset all your settings back to default. Uh, I'm going to no because this is where model I'm going to use as kind of my, my guinea pig. And any function or any action that you use in here will actually be noted and will do it. Even if you rotate the view, it'll copy that. So if not sure, press yes and that'll reset it. So no. What I'm going to do, everything from here on out is going to be an action. I'm going to change this to zero like I wrote previously. I'm going to press extract. It's going to show the model. It says if you're happy with that, we'll press accept. Now we got a model. The next thing you do is uncheck this, check that, and then Z remesh. But remember, I also had the legacy. And it can be in any order. You can flop it around. But as long as the settings that I need to be set up before I press this button will be recorded. Now I'll press it. And I'll press it again. And that seems to be clean enough. We could probably add one more. But for this, I'll go ahead and end it. Now it's going to ask where to save it. This is another part where you're going to want to go into. Um, what I need to do is copy the location you want to save it to. And it's going to be your startup for... And I'll show this location so you go to your pixel logic root folder and navigate to startup and here you'll see macros and you can see the folder this is default this should be here already and then you'll have your quick tools that I just created I made a new folder so if you need to see example you could create new folder and it'll end up as a next tab here but I made a quick tools folder for what I needed and that's this one this is one I created we can over, save over this one but I'll create a new one just to show two and we can save this now what we have is another macro script here if I were to do a model or Let's just start fresh with this one and let's delete that. And let's go ahead and dynamish this so we could actually see what's going on whenever I was creating those models. Um, let's go ahead and deform this and show what it could be. Let's go ahead and grab this. We'll just bring this out, bring that out. And say, for instance, we wanted to extract from this part right here and it's not a pretty mesh either and we already know we need this to grab so I'm gonna grab this select it and then we're gonna go ahead and run this function and it should go through each one of these options so if I change all this and let's go ahead and change these uh, everything's back the way it was I'm gonna press this and it should run through each action that I wanted so you can see all the defaults changed to where I needed and now I have a clean model here and it's extracted and to show let's go ahead and all polygons let's go ahead and scale that so now I have that and this saves a lot of time if you were to go in here do this again so if I select this model again go to the next mask extract that saved at least a couple of clicks that I would have done and instead of letting the computer do it for me and not waste so much time trying to go through each one of these clicks and trying to waste um, a little bit of time whenever time is valuable to make something and now if I were to turn dynamic 
you can kind of see what you got. And then you can start sculpting on this. And then now you've got a model that's actually usable and saves you a time in the end. So I hope this makes sense and how to use um, the macro. <clears throat> One, one thing I want to kind of pull up to um, that if you're going to get dig a little deeper into this that I found, um, I'm going to go ahead and go back into my startup real quick on the side of the screen. And I'm going to open up that first one. And this is what each one of these are actions for that. And then you can go back and adjust these actions in here. You can actually change this to zero, zero. And anything else and if I were to go into the one we just created we can see here thickness and I guess that stayed at zero okay that was the original thickness but we changed it to zero right here and then the extract the accept the the next steps in here you can see what it's doing and these are just a few steps that you can save time in. So I hope this helps. I hope you'll look into the, you know, the macro script. I, I had hesitation using it until I, saw, I dug a little deeper in and understood it a little bit better. And now I feel a little bit more understanding of what it can do and how much time you can save. I've used macros in 3D Max and Photoshop, but... You kind of forget about ZBrush because ZBrush is so much more artistic. But if you optimize your workflow, you could also get a quicker workflow and also work smarter, not harder. So I hope this helps. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching.